Welcome to My on Mondays, an explorative approach to the possessive my through narratives, art, and sound. Each Monday brings a new creation and unique perspective. My on Mondays is brought to you by Ming Studios, a contemporary art space and international artist residency program dedicated to the exhibition, experience, and exploration of arts and culture. Along with exhibiting artists from around the world, Ming also serves the community by hosting innovative programs including performances, workshops, screenings, readings, artist talks, and other cultural activities. For more information or if you'd like to participate in Mayan Mondays, you can visit our website at mingstudios.org. Hello and welcome to the 137th episode of Mayan Mondays. Michelangelo di Lodovico Buonarroti Simoni was most famous for painting the frescoes on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. But the high Renaissance Italian painter, born in 1475, was also a sculptor, an architect, and a poet. Surprisingly, Michelangelo, who was considered the most accomplished artist of his era, came from a family of bankers. But because of his mother's prolonged illness and subsequent death when he was only six years old, Michelangelo was sent to live with a nanny and her husband, who was a stonecutter, from which the artist's love of marble and sculpture was born. As a young boy, he was sent to study in Florence, but showed no interest in school, preferring to copy church paintings. At the age of 13, Michelangelo was apprenticed to the artist Domenico Girlandaio, one of a group of artists who had been called to paint the walls of the Sistine Chapel. Michelangelo was later recommended by Girlandaio to the patron Federico Medici, and ultimately, as we all know, went on to paint the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel himself. Some of his other famous works include the sculptures of David and Bacchus, as well as his painting of The Last Judgment, among many other brilliant works of art. But during his lifetime, he also wrote over 300 sonnets and madrigals, many of which are an interesting window into his inner world. Today we share three sonnets with you, translated into English by John Addington Simmons in 1904, which speak to how Michelangelo saw himself and the work he created. The Artist and His Work How can that be, lady, which all men learn by long experience? Shapes that seem alive, wrought in hard mountain marble will survive, their maker whom the years to dust return. Thus to effect cause yields, art hath her turn, and triumphs over nature, I who strive, with sculpture, know this well, her wonders live in spite of time and death, those tyrants stern. So I can give long life to both of us, in either way, by color or by stone, making the semblance of thy face and mine, centuries hence when both are buried. Thus, thy beauty and my sadness shall be shown, and men shall say, for her twas wise to pine. THE LOVER AND THE SCULPTOR The best of artists hath no thought to show, which the rough stone in its superfluous shell doth not include to break the marble spell, is all the hand that serves the brain can do. The ill I shun, the work I seek, even so, in thee, fair lady, proud, ineffable, lies hidden, but the dark I wield so well works adverse to my wish and lays me low. Therefore not love, nor thy transcendent face, nor cruelty, nor fortune, nor disdain, cause my mischance, nor fate, nor destiny. Since in thy heart thou carriest death and grace, enclosed together, and my worthless brain can draw forth only death to feed on me. To Giovanni da Pistoja, on the painting of the Sistine Chapel. I've grown a goiter by dwelling in this den, as cats from stagnant streams in Lombardy, or in what other land they hap to be, which drives the belly close beneath the chin, my beard turns up to heaven, my nape falls in, fixed on my spine, my breastbone visibly grown like a harp, a rich embroidery bedews my face from brush drops thick and thin, 
my loins into my paunch like levers grind my buttocks like a crupper bears my weight my feet unguided wander to and fro in front my skin grows loose and long behind my bending it becomes more taut and straight crosswise i strain me like a syrian bow whence false and quaint i know must be the fruit of squinting brain and eye for ill can aim the gun that bends awry come then giovanni try to succour my dead pictures and my fame since foul i fare and painting is my shame Thank you for joining us today. We'll be back next Monday. Tune in.